I got this phone in February 2020 and I've been wanting to use it, but I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't actually use it until I went ahead and built a case for it, 3D printed a case for it. So it's still in here. It still has a plastic covering. Oh, and all that stuff flying out everywhere. So it still has a plastic covering. Um, I'm using my phone I got in Thailand to record the videos I've been making. And I want to use this because I think it has a better camera. I really don't know. They just kind of sold me on it, but that's okay. And I want to go ahead and build a case for it. The kind of case I want to build is I want something that's going to The kind of case I'm going to build is I want something that's going to be able to cover the front camera and then be able to come off and as well as the camera that faces you because on our computers and our laptops and everything we always not we but like people are concerned about privacy so they'll cover the camera on the laptop but no one ever covers your camera or microphone on your phone so that's one of the cases I want to design and build for this was something that covers the microphone and the cameras on the phone but you could flip it off and so that's what today's video is on. And I'm super excited to finally start using this, this Thailand phone. At first I tried to save time by buying a 3D model of a Google Pixel and then building the case around that. But I soon found out that it had too many uh, vertices, I think it's called. Uh, in my computer, it just messed up Fusion 360 and my computer, I don't know what happened because it wasn't stressing it. It was just the actual program couldn't handle it. So I had to basically go ahead and build my own shell of a phone. Uh, to work off of. Okay, so here we are. This is the hard shell. The front plate adapter, it fits right there, but it doesn't actually click in. So I'm gonna have to redesign how the front plate works. And the back lens cover, uh, once you put the rubber on, if you guys can see the blue little rubber right there, around the edge. So in order to get it in now, I have to give it a push. And it, so it's pretty hard to get in, see it didn't even stay that time. And so I'm going to have to redesign how this uh, this works as well. You can get it to stay. You just got to get it the right. Um... There you go. See? Now it stays the right way. But uh, while I was printing, all the attachments basically balled together or they just completely did not really work out very well um, and just failed. So I don't have those. I'm going to have to redesign that part as well. But just to show on the soft shell which actually looks really nice, especially with the 3D printer grains on there. It's semi-translucent, so you can actually see them. Uh, they don't really show up that well on camera, but it just clips right on. So now let's see if I can uh, get it on the phone. Test number two. Oh, I touched my computer. Oh, those buttons work really well. Time to throw the back on. 
First off, I'm going to make sure that uh, this lens doesn't stick out past. No, it's indented a bit, which is good. So it's not going to hit. So that clips on. So this back, I would sand it, but this is just still a prototype. Um, you can see like a little bit of pitting here and where the supports were. So I would sand it, but this is just a prototype, so I'm not going to bother to sand it. Um, I think it actually looks pretty cool like that, to be honest with you. This ridge here, I don't think it's very useful. I put it to protect the, plas uh, the plastic that was supposed to, like the TPU that was supposed to go in here. Um, but I, it's not really big at all, and it's not really going to protect anything. If anything, I can get a smoother print like this um, if I go ahead and I just get rid of that ridge, which would be nice. These look okay. Uh, the holes kind of, I need to make the hole, make the hole. I don't know what happened. There's something messed up on the print bed. Uh, so I tried to do that and it chipped. These small holes are too small. So those are going to have to be made bigger. There's a nice ridge for protection for the screen, which is nice. So it doesn't actually hit the screen. That's good. Um, I don't actually mind these openings I added to make it easier to print instead of having them filled. See, that's going to be hard to get your finger in there. Like, it would almost be better off to have a slider of sorts or something, because to get your finger in there and pick it up... Hmm. Going to have to think that part through a bit. But for my first phone case, the buttons line up perfect. It sounds great when they click. It clicks nice. And I can go ahead and I can put this on here if I'm not using it. And if I do want to use it, I'll have to just pick it off and then put it right there. Yeah, and it holds. Let's do a bit of a... Ooh, I heard a crack. I hope that wasn't the phone. The case is finally done. Now, it didn't turn out the way exactly that I wanted it. I will be making redesigns to it, but the reason why I didn't include that in this video is A, I kept my promise, so now I can actually start using my phone, which is all that really mattered to me. But no, in, ser in seriousness, after I started printing it and designing it, I thought of a way better design for the case. So I wouldn't be redesigning the existing design. I'll be completely starting over from scratch. And so I have a few other projects that are on the go right now that I want to get done first, and then I'll have to revisit this. But in the meantime, I can use it. The only privacy cover that works is the front camera, as this one doesn't actually stay on and none of the plugs printed properly. But that's okay, because version two is gonna come. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks.